Welcome to video eight in a series of introductory videos for SolidCam. This video's topic is 2D iMachining. So iMachining is our proprietary toolpath that allows you to plug in information about your machine and your material to optimize the toolpath. What this means is that it will try and go to the maximum spindle speed, maximum free days, free feed rate as much as possible to make sure that you reduce your cycle time while still controlling the engagement with the material to extend your tool life. So to get our machining to work, first thing we need to do is add a machine and a material definition. So we'll do that in the cam part section. In your cam part definition, we'll go down to I machining data. And you can see there are two pull down menus, one for machine and one for material. These lists, uh, depending on your install, could have uh, a couple of definitions already. Sometimes you need to actually plug in your own. Uh, so for instance, if I didn't have my machine listed or my material listed, I would go to Edit iMachining Database. And I'll add a new machine. I'll just right click and say New Machine. And then in the New Machine section, I can give it a name. And then here, I'll just give it the information specific to the machine. In this case, the max spindle speed, the max feed rate, and the max horsepower of the spindle. This information could be found in your operations manual. It could be found online. Some make and models, you can actually find the data sheets on the machines on the original manufacturer's website. So you just get the max, the max feed rate, spindle speed, and horsepower, plug it in here, and your machine is defined for iMachining. Likewise, for the material, again, I'll just right click and say new material, give it a name, and then you'll see here, the highlighted information is just the ultimate tensile strength. In this case, all I have to do is just look this up on a uh, from a material supplier. They can give me that information. I can look it up on the internet. One place I usually direct people to is matweb.com. So here is a, uh, it's just a, a material database with various information about, uh, about materials. In this case, we'll just plug in some information we know about our material. Let's say we're doing aluminum 6061. So I'll just type in 6061, do a search, and then from the results, just find one that best fits what it is I'm machining. So in this case, let's say we're doing T6. So I'll just click on the 6061 T6, go to the mechanical property section, get the ultimate tensile strength, right there, 45,000 PSI. And then what I would do is I'd come back here and plug in that value in this red area. So the default installs actually already do come with some material, but they're listed with these generic names and some uh, some ratios or, or some just listings here of, of hardness. This is a good training uh, data entry, but you definitely want to put in your specific information. That's because you're trying to optimize the cut. So the more accurate information you plug in there, the better off you'll be. So in this case, I'm just going to go with what I've already uh, put in here. So the Haas SS and the 1018 steel. Once those are actually in your database, you have them forever. They're part of your database. You never have to define that again. So let's actually create the 2D I machining toolpath. So I'll just go to add milling operation to the I machining. And similar to what we saw in video five, this is just a pocketing toolpath, so we're gonna program it the same way. We're gonna say new geometry. I'll grab an edge for my solid. Just do a constant Z to find the rest of that pocket. And I've got my geometry. My tool, I'm just gonna choose my one inch tool, which I already have predefined. And my levels. I'll just grab it from the solid. So upper level there, pocket depth, the bottom of the part. And what, since it's a through pocket, let's just poke through by 20 thou. So those first three sections are the same as we saw in pocketing. You're just choosing geometry, the tool, and the levels. After that is where we see the differences. So in this case, with 2D I machining, we have the technology, technology wizard. The technology wizard allows me to take control over this automatic toolpath. So it will calculate fees and speeds based off my machine and my material. It'll calculate radial step over and step down based off of my tool dimensions and the material. So all of that goes into calculating this for me. So you can see here I have a feed rate of 51 inches per minute, and I'm gonna have two step downs of just over a half inch. Now, 
This is all calculated for me based off the information I just provided. But let's say I want to go even harder with this material. I want to be more aggressive. The machining level allows me to increase or decrease the aggressiveness of the calculation. So I don't have control over the feed rate in terms of the number, but I do have control over how large that number can be. So right now it's 51 inches per minute. If I slide this over to level eight, it's now 80 inches per minute. So depending on definitions of the machine, the material, and the tool, I can get that to go even higher. One of the main focuses of eye machining is just the chip thickness, and that's that red bar right there. And you can see that that increases or decreases as I slide that back and forth. In the modified cutting conditions, we have further control over some more parameters. Again, this is to better to dial in your toolpath, so to get it more, uh, more accurate, more optimized for your combinations of machine, material, and tool. Um, a lot of people skip over this, they just leave it as the default, but here you find turbo mode. What this does is it increases the aggressiveness of that calculation. So at level eight turbo, you can see the spindle speed has increased a little bit, and the feed rate, it's not as high as it was before, but it's gonna be more aggressive. The cutting angles and the chip thickness have increased or decreased, if you take a look at those values. The technology section, really all it is is just the offsets on the wall and the floor. Again, there are further controls here, but oftentimes the default are, are good. Um, you will come in here and change a lot of these parameters if there's something with your material that's a little different than, than a standard material. Things like the morphing spiral and the channel selections, uh, a lot of that can help you to better, to better dial in your material. But let's calculate this. We'll take a look at that toolpath. So it begins with that helical entry that we see there. And then once it enters into the material, it goes into a morphing spiral. So it morphs out to match the outside edge of the material. Once it gets into the corner, it actually never buries itself. There's no 90 degree turns in here. It stays between 10 and 80 degrees, meaning that it controls the material engagement. The chip load remains constant. Since I used a one inch tool, I'm probably leaving a lot of material behind. If we were to check this using the, the, uh, the stock, it probably would show that there's a lot of material left there, especially since this radius right here is only uh, 310 thou. So what we wanna do is let's choose a smaller tool. First, what I'll do is I'll just make a copy of this. And in the top left corner under technologies, you'll see that we have control to change it from a roughing to a roughing plus finish or just finish. But I'm gonna choose I rest. And what I rest does, it opens up this third tab here, which we'll see what it does once we change the tool. So let's go to tool. I'm gonna to switch this to a quarter inch tool. If I were to do a save and calculate at this point, it would redo the entire pocket. So what I wanna do is with the I rest in the technology section is tell it that the previous tool was one inch. I left 10 thou on the walls and the floor. So the I rest is really just for the remaining material. Rest is an acronym for remaining stock. So with the quarter inch tool, if I do a same calculate, and now we'll focus on whatever was left over by the one inch tool. In this case, the corners and a little bit of these corners over here. If I go back and make this a I rough plus finish, You'll see that in the technology section, we now have an expanded section here for the finishing aspects of this toolpath. So with the same tool, I can do some I rough toolpath. So I would rough out all the material. I finish is still doing finishing, but you can either choose to do it as a contour style finish or continue to use the eye machining finish. The eye machining finish would be that helical movement. It would be those morphic spirals. But for the floor finish, we probably want to have a contour just so it has that nice traditional rectangular look to it. So if I just do a save and calculate on that, you can see that overlaid with the eye machining is that rectangular motion there. So eye rough plus eye finish. Any questions on this or anything else from SolidCAD, you can always give us a call at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2. You can send us your parts or your questions via the ticket system at solidcamsupport.com. And stay tuned for the rest of the videos in this introductory series. Thanks for watching.